Good afternoon guys and welcome to another video for Motorhome Retrofits. Today's video or the work that we've been doing this week is on our resident motorhome here. It's a 2009 Swift Besser car. And to date, even though it's got some really great features, uh, including things like AC, which a lot of motorhomes don't, it's never had any solar panel um, upgrades done to it with the previous owner or by us. So what we have done on this particular video is show you uh, a nice clean example of a vehicle that doesn't have solar panels and now has got solar panels. So it all really started um, by jumping up onto the roof of the vehicle, giving the roof a nice big clean and getting it nice and prepared, but also measuring the um, surface area that we've got for solar panels and then offering it up to our experts to come back to us with what we can get away with, what panels we can fit and what output we're going to get from the actual panels themselves. So once we'd heard back from the solar panel supplier that we use, uh, they had said, look, with the amount of room that you've got, this is the biggest size panel that we can do. In actual fact, on this particular vehicle, it was two smaller panels that gave us a combination of 200 watts rather than a 180 watt panel. Uh, so we, we squeezed an extra 20 watts out of it. So what we have done is Martin's then offered up the panels on the roof, We've then allowed for the cabling to go up underneath and get sealed underneath. We've drilled the holes for all of the brackets, but including drilling the holes, have then all of them have then been sicker flexed down onto the actual motorhome itself. So you're making it watertight, but also secure because they are at the front of the vehicle. Once the panels are then fitted on the vehicle, the cabling has been routed down the channel on the left-hand side here, which would normally be a grab rail or roof rail. Um, and we've taken it into a, uh, an area where we can drop it straight into the roof, into the wardrobe. And that's where our solar control um, controller is. So it was easier that way rather than having, and we see on a regular basis, um, installations from other companies where they have just fitted a length of cable on the roof and it's either flapping about or they've put it in some trunking and it just doesn't look very neat. So what we've done as well, because we do our 360 stuff with the drone, we wanted it to look as neat and possible. And again, in the thumbnail for this video, you're gonna see the lovely new, nice, neat solar panels fitted. Uh, then the next stage for Martin is after he's drilled the hole into the roof, into the wardrobe, dropping all the cables down through and collect it, uh, connecting them with their polarity into the actual um, Bluetooth and solar controller. So the next stage for Martin, after he had wall mounted the solar controller and connected the solar panels to themselves, was to then run the thick, heavy duty battery cable. Uh, and that is the um, voltage um, and the amps being carried down through to the leisure battery or batteries. Now in this particular vehicle, we've got two leisure batteries um, fitted on the near side, so that's passenger side. So he has run all the cabling down the drive side here into the wardrobe, dropped it down into the cupboard, underneath the beds and all the way around the back and into the battery area, cut off the spare cable so that it's not looped up uh, and then connected the positive and the negative to the batteries which are connected in series anyway um, and that doesn't really matter because then it means that both batteries are getting an equal charge. Now um, if you've got a vehicle that's already got uh, the control panel above the habitation door um, that doesn't talk to that in any way shape or form because this is an aftermarket solar installation. Uh, and we do find, especially on an older vehicle like this, that the older vehicles and fuse board systems can only cater for maybe an 80 or 100 watt solar panel, but we wanted to get the very best out of this setup. So the um, Victron solar converter or the solar um, manager is then connected down through to the leisure batteries underneath, um, and that's it. And of course, part of the video is then, uh, if if we get any more sunny days, then obviously you'll be able to see that the solar panels are working in operation and the solar controller in the, in the actual um, wardrobe itself, then receiving a charge and feeding that back to the batteries. Now, at some points, there's going to be um, times where your uh, the sun is out, the solar panels are doing their job, but the batteries are already fully charged. So that's when the solar system stops uh, or the solar controller stops feeding in 
and then feeding out and it just stops there uh, and it goes back out and it doesn't do anything to the batteries because obviously you don't want them to be overcharged. Um, but the whole point of this video was really to um, show you a vehicle that's had no solar panels at all in, ever in its life to having a system fitted. Um, yes, it's quite, uh, quite time consuming, but what you do end up with is the ability then to be when you're off grid, you're not plugged into shore power um, connected to 240 volts on the side of the vehicle. You might just be pulled over somewhere um, out in the New Forest or wherever you are in the UK um, and just want to be able to use your lights, um, phone chargers or other such devices. And you can do all of that uh, in the safety of knowing that your batteries are being charged as well. So great video for Motorhome. We've been quite excited to do this. Uh, and more importantly, if you've got a vehicle that needs solar panels um, or needs some sort of auxiliary ancillary charging device, then please do get in touch with us. Website links in the bio. Um, as usual, follow us on social media. Keep watching our YouTube videos. And thank you for watching.